we're in the middle of the uh, great cloud computing price war of 2014, and I figured <laughs> I'd uh, get an executive on the hot seat to grill him. <laughs> we have uh, Rackspace's president here to talk about that and a whole bunch of other things uh, for the first time. So yeah. let's get into it. Hey, Robert. I'm Taylor. Yeah, what's nice up? Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Taylor Rhodes. Uh, privileged to be the president of Rackspace. A whole three months into that job. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been with Rackspace about seven years, grown up in all different parts of the company. Uh, and i um, super excited to actually be joining you in the midst of the cloud price wars in 2014. Lots yeah. to talk about. Why pay more for Rackspace? That's a question I'm hearing. You know, because yeah. uh, we're in the middle of price war. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Everybody's lowering prices. Why not just go with the cheap, uh, the cheapest per uh, uh, megabyte or gigabyte, or cheapest yeah. per this or cheapest per that? Why, why not go with those guys? Uh, well, I think you just hit the root of the question we're trying to provoke in the market. So, you know as well as I do that in any TCO total cost of ownership calculation, there's the what do you pay for infrastructure stuff, right? Then there's the, what do I pay for all the software? Then there's the, what do I pay for the people who take care of it? And I think the myth in the market, the cloud myth, is that a cloud platform is your only cost consideration, right? So when you think about whether it's 30 cents a gigabyte hour at Amazon or 60 cents a gigabyte hour at Rackspace, making those numbers up, but just for order of proportionality, the question is, in addition to that 30 cents for the cloud platform that you're gonna buy somewhere else, what are the other dollars you gotta count into that for hiring the people who are gonna take care of it and manage it 24 seven for you? And are those the skills you really wanna be employing or would you rather go hire another dev who's gonna help you ship more product? Yeah. And so when you think about the Rackspace pricing model, our model has the infrastructure component to it, but it also has the service component and the SLAs and everything else. And so it's a hard compare so what we're working on is how do we create a pricing model that creates more transparency about what do you really pay for infrastructure at Rackspace? Because let's just level set on that. Then what do you pay for services and what kind of guarantees do you get for those things? Yeah. How important is open source in this world? It, you know, it seems like we're the only ones out there, out there built on an open source yeah. backbone. Yeah. yeah. I think um, it's important, but it's not sufficient. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know, when Rackspace launched the, the, the campaign we launched in early 2013 around the open cloud company, we were starting a conversation with the market about the fact that open is a better destination for you. It's a better destination because it will allow you to leverage the talent and capabilities and spend of lots of people rather than just your own. It will help you be more mobile with your data um, and avoid things like lock-in. But what we found in that conversation is I agree with you that open is a better destination for a lot of people, but it's not sufficient. Your product has to work, it has to be mature, it has to come with the management tools around it that make it usable for me. So if it's not helping me do what I need it to do today, but it's a great destination, not sufficient. If it helps me do what I do today, lots of people will say, I'll choose that path because I agree with you, it's a better destination. So I view open as a means to an end, an important one, um, but it can't be the end in itself. Yeah. Uh, is innovation over in cloud? You know, is cloud done and we're just going to compete no on way. Uh, what, So yeah. tell me where you think uh, cloud's going to go over the next 18 months well, or so. The way I I think with lots of data points in the market show that it's super early days. The early days are just like any other change in IT or any other industry. Early adopters are trying to solve problems with new tools. So what do they do? They go start to use those new tools. Those tools proliferate and the first offers in the market are great for them because they solve a problem and a pain point, but for the main market to adopt, they have to evolve and become a whole product, a whole solution, right? I think the first four or five years of cloud were about a developer-oriented model that was super better than the CIO model. I'm waiting for six weeks for you to get me a server and the permanent cross-charge that comes with it, and so of course it drove a lot of adoption. But I think as the market evolves, public cloud only converts to hybrid options do-it-yourself models only convert to managed service options, no guarantees and SLAs convert to I want to buy something from you that tells me that you have skin in the game with me, et cetera. So I think just like any other change, it's evolving into a whole product, which means more of the market can adopt it. I also think the, the other thing that's interesting is as cloud infrastructure prices drop, which they will continue to do, 
I think that means you will see more of a proliferation of software and tools that are designed to take advantage of the cheap infrastructure, which does in the end create opportunity and complexity. Yeah. And Rackspace has always thrived on managing complexity for customers. How do I take advantage of those tools as well? So I think that opens up a really cool opportunity for us. Yeah, I wrote a book called Age of Context, which was really uh, to lay out what the business world was doing yeah. and going forward. Mercedes just announced a contextual car that right. knows that you're sitting in the passenger seat or your kids are in the back and, yeah. and does different things if your kids are in the back instead of a, a business meeting in your car. Can right? it silence them? Can it mute them? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Union Pacific is putting sensors underneath rails. You know, right. John Deere Absolutely. has tractors that are uh, very data driven now. Yeah. What are you seeing happen? Because you're meeting with uh, even more customers yeah. than I do. And, and uh, what are you seeing happen in the world? Well, look, I mean, I think that, that you know, big data is a, an overused term, but it really is accurate, right? I mean, all of those points are another point of data that needs to be sorted and stored and understood. And I think a lot of companies are grappling with how do I make good use of that? Not only how do I store it efficiently and economically, but what should I use it for? How does that source of knowledge become a way that my product engineering team builds better stuff and my salespeople know who to sell things to better, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I certainly see that. Um, I also think that you're seeing just across the board, the cloud business model is um, just a huge innovation spark, right? So we hear lots of CTOs or heads of R&D talk about the fact that just being able to go try things in a cheap and disposable way lets yeah. really smart people try more things out, which then means that they're getting much more product pipeline faster. And so I overall feel like IT is firmly back in the seat of being an innovation source rather than just a cost center, which really, you know, seven, eight years ago, it was just a cost center. People were trying to manage it for efficiency. Yeah, well, I'm hearing that from all sorts of businesses that they're being asked to study everything about everything, mm -hmm. which I didn't quite understand. But Uber, for instance, knows yeah. where every... Uh, employees, every customer is yeah. standing, right? They yeah, know where that's you're right, standing, exactly. Right? I was Ubered uh, this morning. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, they know where every uh, every transaction is happening and yeah. even why the transactions are happening. Did a baseball game just get out? They know that, that's right? right? They yeah. know everything about yeah. everything. And uh, their employees are rated after every ride, right? right? Yeah. Well, we're only rated after uh, six months. <laughs> so <laughs> We actually, you know, at Rackspace, one of the things that we do, which is a similar concept, is we do have um, the opportunity for customers to rate us after every ticket that we handle or every call or every chat. And so it is a similar thing, but the question then is what do you do with that? Yeah. How does that become part of what you build next, right? How does that become part of the next service you offer to your customers? Because I think that in, in the end, being able to rate me is nice, but what do I learn from that? Yeah. But I know business is putting 3D sensors in grocery checkout aisles yeah. to watch traffic flow pattern, all sorts yeah, of crazy absolutely. stuff that yeah. people are, being asked to innovate and do th new things with. And right. I'm sure they're calling you up and going, hey, I need help. <laughs> well, I mean, look, I think generally the, the, the need for help against those things stems from the management of complexity, right? I have lots of opportunities. I've got lots of things, new pieces of data and information. And so at the end of the day, it is about what's the right business model and how does IT play a role in enabling that business model? And for us, it's simply about how do you build the right cloud, hybrid cloud um, offering with the right managed services on top that help people take advantage of that to create new products. Yeah. I think the thing for us is very simple, right? We wanna find customers who say, I've got a business to run, um, and I view technology as critical to that business but not core to it, and I would rather you go do these things so that when I hire the next dev, they can go write more code and infrastructure operations doesn't become my bottleneck. I want you to make that effective and efficient for me. What kind of customers are we gonna fire? Well, uh, hello, customers. I, I, I actually think that we want. I asked that question, you know, like at, at the Ritz. What, what, you know, wh well, look, who do you not want to serve? Because that tells me about who you want to serve. Right? Yeah, look, I, I actually think that the Rackspace's value proposition in the market, when you think about our managed cloud value proposition versus unmanaged cloud value propositions, inherent in that, we want to find customers who value the service we provide, who value Rackers and the software we write running things for you so that you don't have to. So for instance, some of the born on the cloud social media companies um, wanna run everything themselves. And they say, look, from the dirt up or very near the dirt, I wanna run it. You know why? Because it's core to my business right now. I've got smart people, I can afford it. I got lots of venture capital money. Um, and having somebody else do that for me right now is not my priority set. We, 
we could go try to sell to those customers all day long and we're not going to win them. But let's flash forward a little bit to that company that has now reached the hyper growth scale, or maybe the growth is flattening out a little bit and they have a different set of problems and challenges and our value proposition is now looked at in a new way. So we want to serve customers who value fanatical support, who see value in Rackers and the tools we create running stuff for them so they can go back to run their business. Yeah. Why does Rackspace uh, focus so much on startups? Because it doesn't seem like they uh, startups are uh, all that important in terms of profits yeah. or money paid or any of that. Yeah. You know, have, having a big enterprise that has thousands of servers yeah. up and running probably makes a lot more sense to the business than uh, yeah. dealing with two kids building something over no, here. And that's that. exactly right. <laughs> Look, I think that in startup land you find people who are solving tomorrow's problems today. You know, you find, you learn, um, you find the people who are going to be the next big thing. Um, you get a chance to interact with folks who are asking the same questions you're asking. Well, with all of this out there, what should I go do with it? What are the business model opportunities? So I think it's a super healthy place for Rackspace to um, work with people who are solving neat problems, who are creating new business models, who teach us things about you know, what our product roadmap ought to look like. So there's lots of value in going out and working with the startup community. Yeah. What else, uh, what else, what other misperceptions do you see of Rackspace out there that you'd want to correct? Yeah. Sure. I think, you know, I find way too many people who, it's our fault for not doing a good job, but they go, oh yeah, you're, you're a web hoster, right? You know, you guys are doing web hosting. Um, and what they mean by that is simple websites, right? Yeah. And, and it's code for, you're not really a player that I should consider to help me with my complex problems, or you're not really in the cloud era, right? Yeah. And I think that that's a big misperception. You know, it was, it was 2006 when Rackspace launched uh, Moso, which was our first off-brand cloud product. Um, and that came out of Rack Labs, right? Smart Rackers working on R&D and innovation, trying to solve problems. Um, and so we got into this cloud thing early. Um, we run, you know, one of the world's largest multi-tenant clouds, but we also run, uh, you know, a full, you know, sort of set of dedicated single tenant options that work together as well. And I think, you know, we employ some of the smartest people in the world. We invented OpenStack. We've got more folks working on OpenStack problems than anybody else in the world. So I would just say I want to correct the, the sort of misperception that, you know, we can't help uh, we don't have the right product set and we don't have the right people. I think Rackspace is full of really smart people working on great stuff. And we've got, you know, over, uh, you know, uh, 200,000 customers who actually really love us, you know, very high loyalty in that customer base. So that's, that's the message I'd want to get out there. Very cool. Yeah. Well, anything else? No, that's it. That's it. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I appreciate you for having me. Yeah.